Good afternoon. I'm Linda Roberts, RN. I'm manager of the Illinois Nursing Workforce Center. Welcome to the webinar, Are You a Nurse Wanting to Educate Future Nurses? The Illinois Nursing Workforce Center is teaming up with higher education institutions across the land of Lincoln to bring you a series of free webinars about the graduate faculty nursing education programs in Illinois for you to consider. We want you to explore the programs and find the right one for you. Today's webinar will highlight in alphabetical order four programs, Benedictine University, Chamberlain College of Nursing, DePaul University, and Millikan University. The webinar is being taped and will be available on YouTube. A bit of background on the Nursing Workforce Center. The Illinois Nursing Workforce Center, formerly the Illinois Center for Nursing, is Article 25 of the Illinois Nurse Practice Act and was created in 2007. The Workforce Center's mission is to advocate and ensure for the appropriate nursing resources necessary to meet the healthcare needs of the citizens of Illinois. As part of the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, IDFPR, it is the only health policy board within this state regulatory agency. The advisory board meets six times a year. The Nursing Workforce Center website address is nursing.illinois.gov. We hope the address is easy to remember. The website has useful information and resources. The website, nursing.illinois.gov, includes education, license renewal, and more resource information. For example, there are license renewal continuing education fact sheets for LPNs, RNs, and APRNs. There are lists and links to all Board of Nursing approved pre-licensure nursing education programs, all baccalaureate completion programs physically located in Illinois, and 90% of their courses are available online, all graduate nursing education programs located in Illinois. There are data and reports, all voluntary RN, LPN, APRN, post-license renewal reports from 2014 to the present, and a few older ones. There are links to the IDFPR license renewal portal, endorsement applications, open faculty positions in Illinois nursing education programs, and other items. Some of the work of the Nursing Workforce Center is through partnerships. The Nursing Workforce Center works with state agencies, nurses associations, nursing education programs, employers, and state and national foundations to focus efforts on the nursing workforce. For example, the Illinois Board of Higher Education, IBHE, Nurse Educator Fellowship Program, an annual $10,000 salary stipend report and recognition, the Illinois Department of Public Health Center for Rural Health Annual Nursing Education Scholarship Program, the Nursing Education Scholarship Program is being transitioned from IDPH to ISAC, the Illinois Student Assistance Commission, as of this year. This program has been around since 1993 and is funded through nurse license renewal fees. There's also the Illinois Healthcare Action Coalition partnership with a and Illinois and Illinois Organization of Nurse Leaders as leadership, and the IHAC partnerships with the Robert Wood Johnson National Foundation. There, you probably have heard of their Future of Nursing 2020 to 2030 report. The Nursing Workforce Center website includes links to Illinois post-licensure and graduate education resources, all the baccalaureate completion nursing education programs, the graduate nursing education programs. There are graduate nursing education focus areas leading to system-focused roles. There's a grid linking the roles with the colleges and universities. The Graduate Nursing Education Advanced Practice Specialization, there's a grid sharing which colleges and universities have the different APRN specialty areas. This website also has additional resources. The IDFPR Nurse License Renewal Resources, the Nursing Workforce Center website, the tab has a license renewal link which will take you to the IDFPR Nurses page. 
which has the link for license renewal as well as other resources. Resources such as if you wish to print a copy of your license or to download it to have onto your phone. If you want to change your address, we would love for you to keep your email address as well as your U.S. mailing address current. And there are other resources and publications. And remember that license renewal is every other year and these are just a few of the resources. This is my contact information. If you have questions, you can email me or go to the website. I thank you very much. And now Dr. Allison Ridge from Benedictine University will present as soon as I close off my slides. I'm so happy to be here with you today. My name is Dr. Allison Ridge. I'm an associate professor graduate program director at Benedictine University's uh, graduate nursing program. If you're not familiar with Benedictine University, we're located in Lyle, Illinois. Lyle is about 25 miles southwest of downtown Chicago. We offer uh, several undergraduate, master's, and doctoral programs at the university. And we also have a branch campus in Mesa, Arizona. The mission of uh, Benedictine University, we are an all-inclusive academic community dedicated to teaching and learning, scholarship and service, truth and justice, as inspired by the Catholic intellectual tradition, the social teachings of the church, and the principles of wisdom in the rule of St. Benedict. The Department of Nursing is housed within the College of Science and Health. We offer an RN to BSN completion program in both a hybrid and an online delivery. The Master of Science in Nursing program, we offer the Nurse Educator Concentration, which is the one that I'll be focusing on today. But we also offer a Nurse Executive Leader Concentration. And Nurse Executive Leader MSN students can go on to earn an MBA dual degree. We offer two post-master certificates, one in nursing education and one in executive leadership. And in fall of this year, we are going to be launching a doctor of nursing practice in executive leadership. So a little bit about our program. Uh, we are CCNE accredited, that's the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, accredited through December 31st, 2025. Uh, in alignment with our accreditation standards, our curriculum aligns with the essentials of master's education in nursing. Our program is delivered in an online asynchronous learning environment. We're deadline driven, so there are uh, due dates for each uh, of the activities each week in each of the courses. And then, of course, the clinical practicum is an on-ground experience. Uh, the nurse educator concentration is 39 semester hours. Whether you're in the executive leader or in the educator concentration, uh, each course is eight weeks long. They're taken one at a time in a uh, sequential basis. And we take three admission periods in the fall, end of uh, early January, and then May. And there on the right is myself and several of my full-time, all of my full-time uh, colleague faculty members and a couple of our adjunct faculty members. So uh, this slide is a little bit difficult to read. It's so small, but these are our six learning outcomes associated with degree in nursing. And you'll be able to see these, and I'm not going to read through each of them. But when we re uh, talk about the curriculum, you'll see how each of the courses in the curriculum align to the learning objectives relate to advanced nursing practice, interprofessional cl collaboration, ethics and culture, quality and safety, uh, uh, integration of information and technology, and a sustained uh, nursing identity and professionalism. So let's talk a little bit about the curriculum. Our foundation is comprised of five courses. Each course is three semester hours and you can see there the course numbers and the names, health promotion and interprofessional collaboration, ethics and culture, evidence-based practice and research, healthcare policy and advocacy, and quality and safety. So those comprise the first five courses students take. 
The nurse educator concentration includes our shortcut name, the three P's, which are advanced health assessment, advanced pathophysiology, and advanced pharmacology. That's required by our accrediting body and the American Association of Colleges of Nursing and our essentials document. And then three educator courses. And the reason they're bolded is because these are the three courses that make up the Postmaster's Educator Certificate. So those courses include instructional strategies, curriculum development, and evaluation strategies and methods. And then we have two practicum courses, Advanced Nursing Practice Clinical Immersion and Advanced Nursing Practice capstone project implementation. And to fill up that space I had left over, I put a quote from one of our uh, grad. And the next slide, I'm going to a little bit more about practicum. So our practicum is 140 clock hours delivered across the two practicum courses, a minimum of 70 hours in the first course and 70 hours in the second. Um, all of the students uh, in taking practicum courses uh, complete them in a clinical setting on ground. The emphasis of practice is on the 15 master's level practice competencies that are described in the essentials document in essential nine. Nurse educator students, since we're focusing on the nurse educator concentration today, must have direct care patient experiences. Uh, the capstone project addresses a clinical nursing problem. It is a, at a unit level project. And often I'm asked if students can complete practicum where they are employed. Yes, that's not a problem. We do not allow students to have their immediate supervisor who uh, evaluates them in their employment role serve as a preceptor uh, as a student. We think that's a conflict of interest. So uh, yes, you can do practicum where you work. We don't really encourage doing it on your home unit and we do not allow it to be your immediate supervisor. But those are the only limits around doing practicum where you work. And that's one of our recent graduates on the in that picture on the right. And that was right at the start of COVID. Thank you, as you can see. Okay, I just wanted to touch on the capstone projects. Uh, students and uh, applicants to the program and people interested are often asking what are some common kinds of projects. So this is just a few that I picked out, promoting skin-to-skin -skin contact after a non-emergent cesarean delivery, maternal positioning for optimal labor outcomes, improving osteoporosis screening for female veterans, and evidence-based assessment of suicidality in pediatric patients. Just a little snapshot of the types of projects that our students complete. I just wanted to briefly touch on the nurse executive leader concentration. I'm not going to read through the courses, but here they are. And again, bolded are the three courses that make up the Postmaster's Nurse Executive Leader Certificate. So admission criteria uh, to become a master's student at Benedictine University uh, must be a BSN graduate from a regionally accredited college or university, have a cumulative GPA of 2.750 on a 4.000 scale, proof of license as a registered nurse in the United States, a personal statement describing goals and rationale for pursuing a master's degree, of course, official transcripts from all colleges or universities previously attended, and one letter of professional recommendation. So here, if you want to become an Eagle and join our uh, program as a graduate nursing student, you can see the web address. And if the slides, I don't know if the slides will be made available, but I do have them hyperlinked. So you can uh, click on these links if they're made available. I just wanted to touch on a few of the um, 
support services on campus for all students. So our academic support center, um, they offer and help students who need accommodations. Uh, there's a writing center, peer tutoring. So that's all offered through the academic support center, the office of career and professional, professional personal development, I apologize, personal development. They assist students with um, resume writing and revisions, practicing interviewing, uh, helping set up internships, all sorts of experiences for both undergrad and graduate students. And we also have a robust alumni network and alumni events. Just a bit about financing your education at Benedictine University. Of course, applying for graduate student loans is an option. There are two scholarships that uh, nursing students can apply for that are internal Benedictine University scholarships. Uh, the business office works with students at all levels uh, uh, to offer a tuition payment plan that takes your tuition across the year and divides it in equal payments. We have, of course, we work with employers who offer employer tuition assistance. And for active military and veterans, we are part of the Yellow Ribbon Program. So thank you so much. I know that was a really quick overview of our programs and focusing on the nurse educator concentration. I'd be happy at the end of the presentations to answer questions. I believe it's my turn to uh, present. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, great, thank you. Hello everyone, and uh, my name is Su Lin Lee. I'm the director of School of Nursing at DePaul University. It is a honor and privilege to be part of this webinar to talk about the nursing education program at DePaul University. First of all, I would like to give an overview of the DePaul University. DePaul was established in 1898. It is the largest Catholic university in the United States. At any given time, we have about 22,000 students enrolled in 11 different colleges or school, and we have over 2,000 alumni worldwide. The School of Nursing was established in 1947, so we have over about 60 years or 70 years of experience offering nursing education programs. Currently, we have over uh, nearly 600 students enrolled in a variety of different programs in a school of nursing. We offer three degrees and one certificate program in the school of nursing, doctor of nursing practice, master of science in nursing, and bachelor of science in nursing and a postgraduate certificate. For each of the degree, there are different tracks. For example, for the DMP program, we offer a DMP completion, which is for those who are APRNs already. And we also offer a DMP family nurse practitioner track, DMP adult gerontology, primary care nurse practitioner track, and a DMP nurse anesthetist program, which is a collaboration between DePaul University and North Shore University. And our post-master's uh, certificate program includes two tracks, family nurse practitioner and adult gerontology nurse practitioner. And for our uh, master's specialty program, we offer four different tracks and nursing education, which is the topic we are talking about today. And we also offer nursing administration track and a nurse practitioner, family nurse practitioner, and adult gerontology primary care nurse practitioner tracks at the MSN level. For our pre-licensure program, we offer a master level entry RN program. And for that particular program, we offer two different cohorts. One is at the Lincoln Park, Chicago, and another is at North Chicago Roslyn Franklin University site. For that program, we are in the middle of transitioning that into an online offering. And of course, we offer the traditional BSN program, which is a four year uh, program, and we also offer RN to BSN completion program. Currently, we have about 598 students enrolled in our program. The largest program is the master's entry RN program, and for the uh, mass for the uh, MSN specialty program, we have about 25 students. Our program has been really successful. All of our programs, including our DMP, MSN. 
BSN all fully accredited for 10 years through 2029. And our graduates are highly regarded by practice setting. For those who have worked with DePaul graduates, and you know what I'm talking about. So today our topic is nursing education track. So the nursing education track at DePaul is offered at the MSN level. And we offer classes completely online, asynchronous, meaning that you can join the class at any time, anywhere of your chosen. And of course, the practicum uh, is in person. And the program takes about two to three years per time, depending on you know, how many courses you wanna take at a time. And we admit four times a year, and we offer courses four times a year as well. And DePaul is a quarter system. We recommend students take two courses per quarter. And the clinical hours uh, varies depending on chosen tracks. For nurse education, we require 225 hours. Nurse administration is a little bit less, and the family MP and adult gerontology requires 500 hours each. For the nurse education track, there are a total of 14 courses. The top nine are the main courses or the core courses for the master's degree, which include theory, research, pathophysiology, um, uh, ethics and political engagement in nursing, health assessment, informatics and technology, biostats, farm, and graduate study synthesis. The bottom five are nursing education specialty related. So you will learn how student learn, which is the learning theory, and how to develop a course, course development. And you're also gonna learn how to increase your instructional presentation skills. And there are two practicum related courses. One is role transition, in which you will be paired with a nurse educator to teach a course, uh, which can be didactic or clinical in nature. And then you will do a capstone you know, project, for example, a project on simulation, how you use simulation to improve student learning. And the DePaul School of Nursing has 37 full-time faculty position and 60 part-time faculty members. And we have seven staff support. Uh, the School of Nursing is nested in the College of Science and Health. And we also have a significant collaborative relationship with Roslyn Franklin University. In the School of Nursing, there are a lot of professional growth opportunities you know, for you. And for example, you can be part of the Sigma Theta Tau and be part of the continual education offerings that we do for uh, our students. And you can share your expertise and build your uh, professional portfolio. And there are plenty of presentation opportunities, writing, writing opportunities, and service opportunity. We also offer the opportunity for students through the celebration of scholarship uh, with our annual Peterson coll uh, Colloquium. The College of Science and Health also offers an annual colloquium, which offers the opportunity for students to present their scholarly work. The application to our program can be done through online or through AACN's nursing class. We require all official transcripts, your RN license, a personal statement, two letters of reference, and your um, current CV. As I mentioned earlier, student can apply to start in any of the four seasons of the year. You can start in September, January, March, or June, and applications are reviewed continuously. Our graduates are highly desirable, and most of our graduates became part-time faculty almost immediately after graduation because we believe in the quality of the program we are offering. And also because there is a huge nursing shortage, uh, nursing educator shortage, you know, in the, um, in the market. So that's all from me. I'd be happy to stay around uh, to answer any questions. Thank you. Chamberlain College of Nursing, which is part of the greater Chamberlain University system. And I am a, a professor 
of education in the education track. And it has been my privilege to be part of Chamberlain for over 35 years. So one unique aspect to Chamberlain is the years of contribution that each of the faculty members have in this program. You will have the great opportunity of working with highly experienced educators. Chamberlain College of Nursing has been in existence for over 130 years, and we have a significant track record of preparing extraordinary nurses and healthcare professionals. We have 23 campuses that are located across the United States, and it is from these campuses that we have our BSN students. The university is fully accredited at the national and state level, and the nursing program itself carries the Commission of Collegiate Nursing Education CCNE accreditation. The degree that we're going to reference today is the Masters of Science, or what is referred to as the MSN, with the focus on educator, or nurse educator. The university does provide on um, campus BSN, and we have a DNP program if that is of interest. A little bit more detail about the master's program. We have a very robust nurse practitioner program. It has several different unique focuses, including the family nurse, a psychiatric mental health, adult gerontology, we also have numerous accelerated tracks, including the RN to MSN, and then we have an MSN with clinical nurse leadership option. But what I'm going to focus and what I'm a part of is the specialty tracks. Within our program, we have numerous specialty tracks, nurse executive, a population health focus, healthcare, and nursing informatics, but the one I'm going to focus on is nurse educator. Our admission requirements do, do require the bachelor's level degree from an accredited institution, the GPA of 3.0, unencumbered, unrestricted nursing license, Six hours are accepted as transfer credit, so that's useful if you have some credit at a master's level to transfer into us. And we do offer special tuition rates for the military associated individuals. Our curriculum, the courses are online. We use an eight week term with two terms per semester and we do admission for each term. So you can enroll and get started within say eight weeks of application. You're able to complete the curriculum over about 12 terms and over about two years. So 12 terms over two years. Our curriculum is divided into two components, the core courses and the specialty tract. The core courses are very exciting, and we are doing a revision of those starting in July 2023. These courses are going to expand and not repeat your content from the undergraduate level. We start with the first one, the foundational concepts, which allows you to get used to the online learning environment. It may have been a little while since you've done a nursing course. So this provides you opportunity to learn and expand upon nursing as a profession. So we will go over many different nursing concepts as well as provide you learning resources by, by our Learning Resource Center. The second one is a leadership role development because you are preparing to be a nurse leader. Informatics is far more than a computer course. This is going to look at data management, quality and safety. 
And then we have a research methods. Now at the master's level, I'm not going to make you fully into a researcher, but learning how to read research studies and be able to guide the leadership of implementing them for evidence-based practice. And then we have population health and epidemiology. The actual nurse educator track or the specialty track will start you with theoretical foundations of instructional strategies. This is where we're going to review how to present didactic or lecture content, but we're not going to just limit that there. We're going to move into presenting high fidelity simulation, teach you about leading clinical groups, as well as going into skills laboratory instruction and even serious gaming. The next course is curriculum development because courses do not happen um, by in isolation. And even working in the nurse professional development area, you will find that there is an overall curriculum. NR536 is our advanced content course, and this is especially unique because we use an avatar or computer-based program to help you not only experience this teaching methodology from the viewpoint as an educator, but as a participant. Then we have assessment and evaluation, where you will learn about assessing the courses, as well as learning how to assess individuals, and such important things as writing test questions, because individuals in nurse professional development will also be writing test questions. And then we also have two practicum courses. Now, the two practicum courses are experiential learning opportunities. By that, we mean they're hands-on. You are able to select a mentor in your local area and then design your learning opportunities. This is one of the only courses in your educational career that you will be able to design the learning activities. And that makes it so exciting for you. The first practicum course is 96 hours, and this will work in different educational areas. We have had students that present content. We have had students that work specifically in high fidelity simulation, skill laboratory, and they have worked in all types of academic or nurse professional development settings. Um, and you can see those all listed there. The second practicum is 48 hours, and this is when you will work with an advanced practice nurse, such as a nurse practitioner. This is to help you develop your knowledge. But what you're going to be able to do is practice, again, developing the skills of staff nurses, of other uh, individuals. So you're going to a lot work with orientation, preceptor classes, in-service training. So all of this is directed toward developing your skills as an educator, while at the same time developing your knowledge in pathophysiology, pharmacology, and physical assessment. We offer the opportunity that if you happen to have a master's degree, in nursing from another specialty area, say nurse executive or nurse practitioner, and you want to improve your teaching skills. This opera, uh, gives you an opportunity to take just the education track courses and develop the knowledge and skills that are useful to an educator. Now, we were asked to develop a little bit of work balance education. We recommend one course per term, but with permission, you can take two. Approximately 15 to 20 hours per week per course. Now, that will vary a lot. On weeks with their assignments, it may be a little bit heavier. On other weeks, it may be significantly lighter. 
One thing that we do allow you to do is to spend your studies for a personal reason. So for a looking ahead that there is a family trip or something that you want to do, you are able to suspend your studies for an eight week term and then come back in. The support system that you have is very important. There may be times that there may be McDonald's for supper. Updated computer so that all of the online learning activities flow easily and well without resistance. Being able to have assignment assistance is important because on the online environment, you can't always meet with somebody. So we have webinars available for all of the assignments where the faculty walk through the assignments step by step. We also have a unique preview week. So before the course starts, you have an opportunity to develop your calendar and get ready. And our faculty are well known for being willing and able to answer any and all questions in a quick and timely manner. I'd like to thank the Illinois Workforce for allowing me to present Chamberlain University College of Nursing. I have in here the links of information to the uh, website and then the admissions contact representative. So thank you for presenting, allowing me to present, and I hope to see you in my graduate classes in the education track. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for setting me up with the slides. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Gephardt, and I am the director of the School of Nursing at Millican University, and we're located in Decatur, Illinois, which is uh, just about perfectly centered in the state. If you uh, fold up the Illinois map uh, into fourths, we'd be right there in the middle. And so we're an alternative uh, for uh, students from across the state, uh, but particularly uh, easy access uh, from um, uh, those communities here in the, in the mid-state. All right, now, how do I get this up there went. Um, so Millican uh, School of Nursing is unique uh, in the sense that we are a small uh, private university uh, that has uh, predominantly only undergraduate degrees, but the School of Nursing uh, has led the way here at uh, Millican in terms of introducing graduate education. And over uh, time, we have uh, advanced in terms of what we offer at the School of Nursing to include the Doctor of Nursing practice. Uh, we have a very successful BS into DNP nurse anesthesia program uh, in conjunction with the Decatur Memorial Hospital. We have BSN and MSN to DNP family nurse practitioner options. And we also have a DNP completion uh, program for uh, advanced practice registered nurses. But what we want to talk about uh, today, and I'll try and keep this relatively short uh, so that we don't keep you too long, uh, but is our Master of Science in Nursing options. And so uh, we have a, uh, a kind of regular, if you will, uh, MSN option that has a concentration in nursing education. And we've had that for quite some time. And we have a master's entry into nursing practice. We call that MIMP. M-E-N-P, which is again, uh, it's a pre-licensure uh, program uh, for students that have, uh, you know, previous degrees in something other than nursing. And this allows them to do the pre-licensure uh, nursing courses along with our master's concentration courses. And so, uh, the MIMP also uh, has a concentration in nursing education. And then the third thing that we have in this program is a graduate nurse educator certificate that allows uh, nurses to only take those 
uh, courses that are related to nursing education as a certificate and apply that uh, in their work locations. So the Master of Science in Nursing, the MSN Nurse Educator, is available to RNs that already have a BSN. And they can take this either part-time or full-time, whatever works best for them and their work-life balance. And so we, uh, unlike uh, some of the previous presenters, are on a semester basis instead of an eight-week basis. And so we build out the, the plan of study for students based on that 15-week semester versus an eight-week quarter. And it's really designed for those who are seeking opportunities to teach in schools of nursing or continuing education programs or staff development roles. And it is only 34 credit hours uh, that are necessary to complete the MSN, assuming you have any prerequisite needs already taken care of. And so it has a strong emphasis on experiential learning opportunities. And so if we focus on teaching uh, pedagogy, uh, the assessment of learning, curriculum development, methods of inquiry, nursing theory, roles of education in healthcare, and research, and then evidence-based practice. And I did not include all of the specific courses. I, I know that you can go out to the website and look at those specific, but you can see the breadth of the types of courses that you'll be taking and learning. And so it does include a residency uh, with a minimum of 200 hours uh, where you will be uh, doing uh, hands-on learning, uh, both in terms of um, experiences with teaching within a university setting, but also teaching within a clinical setting as well. We want our uh, nurse uh, educators at this MSN level to really be able to walk into whatever is the best job opportunities for them. For them. Now, our master's entry into nursing practice, or MIMP, uh, is again, as I said, for those uh, nursing students that have earned a baccalaureate degree in a field other than nursing. We get a lot of students that are coming in from our science partners. You know, they've got biology degrees or psychology degrees. I mean, there's a whole range uh, where, for whatever reason, they have changed their minds and decide they really want to be a nurse. Maybe they were a junior or senior in their program at their university and, you know, really was so far along that they went ahead and completed that and then. Uh, wanted to pursue uh, a nursing education, or we get a lot of students that have been out in the workforce and, you know, just decided nursing is really what they want to do. And this is a pathway for them. There are um, baccalaureate degrees where you can get your second degree. But for us, we decided to really pursue this as a master's level so that they can go on and uh, between the pre-licensure courses and the master's core courses, they're really in a position of getting that first entry job uh, as a staff nurse, but quickly move up the ranks in terms of leadership within their organization or taking side steps into things like nurse educator, uh, et cetera. And so uh, a very versatile approach to uh, getting your um, nursing degree. Um, they are eligible at the end of the program. Uh, to sit for NCLEX, the nursing licensure. And uh, they also, you know, have had all of those pre-licensure nursing topics, uh, all the traditional nursing topics, plus all of those core MSN courses that include the teaching-related curriculum. And so it is, unlike the 
MSN nurse educator. Uh, it, that can be done part time. It can be done over you know a period of time or very quickly. Uh, the MIMP is a prescribed progression, and so it's full time. It's continuous and it's a 26 month program. But at the end of that 26 months, you can become licensed as an RN. You are set up to move quickly into whatever direction you want to after that first kind of staff nurse position. And it is 81 credit hours. So it's much more intense and longer, but uh, really uh, fits very well. Uh, you can apply for the MSN, either the Nurse Educator or the MIMP uh, program uh, through uh, the Nursing CAS link, which I've uh, indicated here. You can also find it on our website. You're going to submit all of your official transcripts for graduate and undergraduate in institutions. We're going to look for evidence of successful completion. Uh, a C or higher for undergraduate nursing research and health assessment uh, for the nurse educators for the undergraduate uh, introductory statistics for both the nurse educator and uh, MIMP. And uh, MIMP alone also has to have a and 1 and 2, microbiology with lab, organic chemistry with lab, and lifespan development. Uh, the Nurse Educator Certificate uh, is for RNs that are just looking for additional education in uh, staff education in the clinical or academic setting and uh, also will have a residency with a minimum of 200 hours and it's nine credits part-time. Uh, we will require uh, typical things for non-degree seeking students. We're going to want your official transcripts. You have to have a minimum GPA for undergraduate at uh, 3.0. And if you're already licensed, an un unencumbered, unrestricted license. Uh, we use a, a variety of approaches for the MSN. It's a hybrid approach. We have a mix of face-to-face -face on Fridays and asynchronous online plus the teaching residence hour, residency hours, which are obviously uh, in person. The MIMP, again, is also hybrid. It is predominantly face-to-face -face, uh, with traditional clinical and teaching residency hours required. And our certificate program is asynchronous online uh, with only the teaching residency needing to be done in person. Uh, so we're happy to answer questions now, but we're also happy to have you email us, call us, uh, and I've also included the admission office number there if you want that. So thank you. She might have stepped away or might be having technical problems, but on behalf of her, uh, IDFPR and the Illinois Nursing Workforce Center, I want to thank everyone for participating today. Um, thank you very much for your presentations. We'll have these up hopefully on the IDFPR YouTube page by the end of the week if all goes well and technology works, of course. So again, thank you for your participating. Thank you for our audience for joining us today, and we'll catch everyone here next time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.